everyone. It's Sarah, the owner and creator behind Multifarious Nature. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're a new viewer, welcome. And feel, please, please feel free to subscribe by hitting the subscribe button below or the bell and you'll be notified when new videos are posted. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for returning. I'm so glad that you're back and I have some shop updates for you guys. I finally dyed some yarn I can show you <laughs> because all of the uh, yarn I've been dyeing for the yarn advent this year, the Multiverse Nature Yarn Advent 2021, I can't show you that. It's a surprise. <laughs> so, uh, sorry about that. Goodness, the light is just blasting everything out. So I'm going to show you guys the new yarn that I dyed up. I'm really excited. There's um, a couple colorways and they're very fall. I was feeling fall this weekend when I was dying and it was so much fun. So it doesn't feel like fall outside. It's, you know, yesterday was 93 degrees Fahrenheit, so very hot. And today I think it's 92, so like a little degree plus. So warm. Anyway, not the best time to be knitting, but I still love knitting outside, especially in the morning though. That's the best. I get up really early on the weekends and sit outside in it, and I love it so much. I look forward to it every weekend that I can. So, shop update. We've got a couple colorways. This is on my Peruvian Highland wool base. Sorry, I'm being blasted out again. Oh goodness. Let's see if this will help. So the colorway is spiced hot cocoa. And it is a beautiful tonal brown with light, their lighter brown areas and medium brown and the darker, deeper brown in here too. So it's just absolutely beautiful. It reminds me so much of Spice Hot Cocoa in your cup, how you get the like very, <laughs> get that like foaminess on top. Like that's what these lighter areas remind me of. And I just feel like this is a beautiful addition to anything. You can make this a sweater if you want, like just do a, a solid color for the entire garment, but even adding this as a like stripe section or anything, I just, I feel like this would just be an excellent brown instead of a solid. I just, I feel like tonals are just, they speak to me so much, uh, especially now that I've uh, been working on that comfort, comfort fade cardi by Andrea Mowry. I am loving variegated yarn. It's so amazing. I like speckled too, but I've just started just touching on speckled. Variegated is just where it's at. Oh dear, it's getting blasted out. <laughs> okay. Next, and again, that was on the Peruvian Highland wool. So it's nice and fluffy and beautiful. This is non superwash base. And. Oh goodness. I'm so sorry, you guys. I just keep getting blasted out. <laughs> I, mean, I hope that doesn't keep happening. The next one is Mossy. It is a green, and I know this is going to affect my camera because, well, green is just the trickiest color to capture, but this is actually, it's a little bit lighter then how it's showing up. Let me see if I can get it to brighten a little bit. It's a little bit more yellow green than it's showing up in the video at the moment, at least from what I can see. I'm sorry, I'm gonna just keep staring at it and not talking to you directly, but I just wanted to make sure it's coming in correctly. So green is a really hard color to photograph. It just tends to get, it's like your camera has issues trying to adjust for that color. So getting there but it's getting blasted a little bit it's getting blown out now <laughs> it's my camera literally doesn't know what to do with this color it doesn't but it is a beautiful green it has like darker areas it's also I would definitely call this a tonal it's not a solid it is a tonal I would say it's a little bit more of a like semi-solid versus the hot cocoa spiced hot cocoa but it definitely is in the same ballpark. So you've got your lighter areas, your darker areas. And again, this is just, 
it's fall, can you tell? But I just, these colors together. And then, of course, I had to have kind of a fun pop of color, so a fun, bright color. And this is different. I don't usually gravitate towards this color <laughs> myself, but I, I did venture out and take on a brighter color, and this is Squash. This is a yellow. It is definitely getting blasted out there. This is much, this is like, this is the way it looks. So it's beautiful. This is a slight variegated tonal yarn. So there's lighter, uh, like golden yellow sections. There's darker golden yellow sections. There's hints of kind of like a very light, like orangey color in there in areas throughout the skein. So this is squash and it just, to me, oh, it's so fall and cozy. I just, I love this. And I didn't have this colorway prior to making the Comfort Fade Cardi, but this would have been an excellent addition. I feel like this, after pumpkin, I just have to show you because when I saw it, I was like, Oh, why didn't I have that color created before? I'm going to show you more of this shortly, but look at this. I mean, really. I mean, caramel corn, of course, looks amazing, but seriously, this would have been excellent to go after pumpkin. I feel like this with pumpkin is just where it's at, guys. Okay. <laughs> I just, I love it. It's so vivid and beautiful and of course now it's getting blown out again <sighs> such is the life of a camera that auto focuses or adjusts auto adjusts anyway i also dyed up some mystery minis so these will be in the shop and they're just nice neutrals there we go now we're getting it right <laughs> so we've got some nice neutrals in there we've got um the mossy colorways in there and those are going into the shop as a mystery mini if you ever do order a mystery mini and you just kind of are hoping for certain colors just put that in your message uh there are certain colors that you like um like reds or purples or whatever and i will try my very best to get you a color that is in that color family that you like uh, if i don't have them then i will do use my best judgment but mystery minis are so much fun so these are going into the mystery mini bin. I have a mystery mini bin that I go from to grab my mystery minis. And I do actually, I want to let you know, I do have select items in the shop on sale right now. Some of them are items that I won't be re recreating. So they're just um, one of kinds and I'm just trying to filter them out of the shop. So there are a couple on sale right now. And if I ever have any other items that are um, on sale, I will pop them into that category it's the sale spot you will see it it's at the bottom of my list of categories on the website multiversenature.com and uh, feel free to stop by there and pick up some fun goodies at a discounted price and now let's get into the works in progress shall we <laughs> first of all um i have been trying okay i'm working on more for operation warm-up flint and I just had an epiphany and I don't know why I didn't think about it before I'm gonna scooch over <laughs> maybe that'll help with my camera but uh, I have a knitting machine hand crank knitting machine and I don't know why it didn't occur to me to use that to hand crank some hats I can't use it to make the mittens but I can certainly use it to crank some hats. So that's what I did. I made little hats. So I'm definitely gearing uh, items towards children. So that's why this is so nice and cute and little. And it's just, a, this is a double thickness beanie. And I had a bunch of yarn from the cast on edge and the cast off edge from the machine. And so I wanna try to see if I can make like a little, um, pom-pom or kind of like a pom-pom crocheted or knit on the top but it's double thickness so it's nice and warm and I actually have a bunch of this yarn because I was able to get it basically as kind of a donation <laughs> and um, 
if I, let me see if I can get this to focus here. There we go. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to try to just make a bunch of those. So that way that can go into the Operation Warm Up Flint. And if you haven't joined yet and you're interested in joining, please join. It, um, it just costs you, of course, your time and your donation, but I will definitely be giving away prizes to those who participate. So please feel free to participate at any time. I just ask that any items that are being donated are finished by October 15th and mailed to me by October 15th. And then, um, <laughs> yeah, that will, I will do a drawing shortly thereafter once I receive all of the items. And um, Operation Warm Up Flint, please feel free to participate at any time. I would love you to join me. I have now made two hats. I am still working on one of the hats that I kind of stepped away from because apparently I just want to cast everything on and I'm starting to do that, which, wow, my own worst nightmare. And I also have to do another mitten because I only have one mitten done for the set that I'm working on. So I probably will only make one set of mittens. They take me quite a bit of time to make and um, compared to hats, kind of. So there is that. Next is the Comfort Fade Cardi by Andrea Maori. I have made major progress. I'm so excited. Here we are, guys. I bound off on the bottom. Oh my God. So I did the two by two ribbing here. I don't wanna to give too much away. This is a paid for pattern, but these are using my Multifarious Nature colorways that I've dyed up. This is Dusk, which is a super moody, deep, dark navy. It's almost black. It's stunning. I love it. Next one is um, it fades into Cranberry, which is what it is. <laughs> it's a cranberry colorway. It is a warmer red. Super gorgeous. That is on my 100% merino base. The rest are the alpaca blends. And then we have pumpkin. I love pumpkin. And it's so, so soft and cozy. I cannot wait to wear this. I can't. Not right now. I'll be really hot, but I just cannot wait to wear it when it gets colder. And then we've got caramel corn at the bottom, which is just this super fun tonal with browns and orange and yellow. Absolutely gorgeous. Love it, love it, love it. So where I left you guys last week, I was down there in pumpkin. And now I've made my way all the way through caramel corn into the sleeve for pumpkin. So um, this is all done, like your, it's reversed. So your, your wrong side is actually your right side based off of the way the pattern is, which I love because when you look at the right side, I mean, it still looks good, but I like the look. It looks a little more blended in with the wrong side, the pearl bumps. So I, I love it. I love this. It is so soft. Mm, and it smells so good. I love wool. <laughs> I mean, my mom is probably giggling at this, me saying I love wool, because I used to say I hated wool because it was, in my mind, all itchy. So sad. I can't believe it. All those years, I could have been cuddling wool. <sighs> oh, well. I figured it out eventually. <laughs> so I've made my way about halfway down my sleeve. I am in the orange section, uh, pumpkin, <laughs> the pumpkin section, and I will be making my way to the caramel corn section. And then the cuff is really neat because you basically fade all the colors, I think, in the opposite direction on the cuff. So I will be getting there shortly. So it's just going to be a super fun cardigan. And then, of course, I still have to do the shawl collar on the cardigan but I love it. I cannot wait to keep working on it. I've primarily been working on this this week and using my needles, but you can understand why. If you've not done a fade yet, uh, any of Andrew Mowry's fade patterns, I do highly recommend them. I've now done two. This is my second one. 
I did the So Faded sweater and they're addicting, so addicting because you just want to fade everything. You want to go from one color to the next and it's like one more row, one more row. And then before you know it, you're binding off the bottom. So this went relatively quickly considering, I mean, look at all that progress. So I've been knitting on this a lot, but I was not monogamous this week. I did at least do a little bit of knitting on other items, but primarily I was working on the Comfort Fade Cardi. So the next one I was working on is the Eden Wrap by Kasha Voleva. Voleva. Vovella. Vovella. There we go. I think I'm close. It's probably not right. Anyway, I just did a little bit of this. I only worked on it today, you guys. <laughs> I'm gonna be really straightforward with you. So I only did. I did the one side was completed already. And now I am working on the other side. I was here prior and I have done just a couple inches, probably about two inches of knitting. This is beautiful stretchy brioche. This is um, my colorway uh, Withering Heights, Multiverse Nature colorway. And I dyed it on um, Valley, Valley Who Fiber Emporium's um, like hand spun that they carry. It's a, um, a blend. You know hand spun so it's not a consistent thickness is thick and thin in areas which is indicative of hand spun which i love and that is what i'm using to make this wrap i wasn't worried about being thick and thin because it's a wrap so it's going to be like a little jacket it's going to be adorable and eventually i will finish it but i am slow going i it really takes motivation i really think the primary reason i have gotten as far as i have with this is because I love the the feel of knitting with such wonderfully lanolin uh, wooly wool. It's so wonderful on your hands. It feels amazing. If you haven't ever knit with that type of wool, please try it. I now if you're like crazy allergic and your skin will break out, don't do that to yourself. <laughs> but if you just haven't done it yet, I highly recommend trying it. Uh, the Ballyhoo Fiber Emporium has excellent yarn. It's it's uh, wonderful. It's like a Shetland blend, the one that I am using. But um, yeah, if you can get your hands on any wool that's spun, definitely worth it. It's worth it. So I still have... Um, this is more like a DK weight. I have fingering weight that's going to be used on the band of it, and I dyed it all in my Multiverse Nature Withering Heights colorway. So excited about that, but again, slow going because my just knitting with this and my colorway that I dyed up is my motivation because single color brioche is just, it's not as much fun as two color brioche. And I know some people are probably going to think why, because two color brioche is probably really hard, but it's not. It's not really hard. Just try it. Just try it. It's so much fun and that will get you addicted to brioche and you'll want to knit everything in brioche. And then you'll knit single color brioche and you'll go, oh, I want to do two color brioche. <laughs> so you definitely should give that a shot if you haven't yet. Next is another project that I've started because, you know, my poor little... I don't even remember the name of it. It's a peplum tank top that I was crying, trying to crochet. It's still in the bag, project bag, over yonder. And I just haven't touched it, I haven't. It's cotton, and we all know how I feel about cotton. If you're new, I don't really like cotton. Now, I should just preface that by saying I don't really like that cream. I'm trying to think of what the brand is. <laughs> have a bunch of, well not a bunch, I have some of it, I don't know. It's a bamboo cotton blend and I don't like knitting with it and I don't like crocheting with it terribly. Mainly the knitting because my it makes my hands hurt and if something makes my hands hurt so I can't keep knitting or crocheting, I don't like it very much. So I think that's fair. I think that's fair. 
Okay, let's get into the, the last work in progress, which is the biscuit socks. So I finally busted into some of the vintage wool that I had purchased. Here's some of it here behind me, and this is part of that. It's uh, in in Diacita. In Diacita, it is 100% alpaca wool. It is really pretty soft, almost mauve color. I guess you could kind of call it a mauve. It's like kind of a violet, but it's a little bit red, like a little bit of a rosy color in it. So I'm gonna go with like mauve. This is like a mauve, but it's 100% alpaca. Very, very soft. I am using, I have two skeins of it. One was already caked up, right here. And I am making some socks. So I am doing the biscuit socks by um, Isabel Handmade Stories. Here it is, it is a free pattern. It has kind of a textured stitch on it. So that's kind of fun. And then it also has, um, I'm trying to remember what they call that heel. If it says it on here. I think on Ravelry it's called like a Dutch heel. It kind of reminds me of the Eye of Partridge heel, which I have never done. So I thought, well, I'm gonna try a different heel. Why not? Am I right? I need to like expand my socks. I already, you know, said I'm finally starting to knit socks again, and now I am slightly addicted to it because it goes so much faster than sweaters. So I'm using my super teeny tiny little needles. I am not using needles that are in the pattern. The pattern went with, I think, three millimeter or something. I don't even know, but I'm going with a 1.5 size needle. I think it was a size three is what the pattern calls for, based on my gauge, based on this yarn that has absolutely no measurements on it. <laughs> the closest thing to measurements is 100 grams. That's about it. Oh, and floor, four ply, it's a four ply. And I guess the other thing is apparently knitting needles size eight. I have no idea. I'm gonna say it's probably falls between a DK and a worsted weight, somewhere between there, somewhere between there. And uh, that is, I am doing, it's a cuff down sock. And which I'm not really partial to cuff down or toe up. I mean, we have done cuff down, but I had been doing toe up recently. So uh, this is gonna be cuff down and it's a two by two rib. I'm gonna probably blast this out by putting it up that close to the camera. Well, maybe not, but yeah, really enjoying it so far. It's gonna be super fluffy looking and everything because of the alpaca and warm. These are gonna be super warm. And so. That's why I am making more of a mid-height. I think it's considered a mid-height. Not, because I've did. i been doing shorties. I'm gonna do a mid-height, a crew height sock for um, this one. So it'll keep my feet nice and toasty. I can wear them in boots. I can wear them um, well, when it's nice and cold out and my feet will stay toasty. Because in Michigan, it can get pretty darn chilly in the winter. So I'm working on those two because apparently I just want to start all the projects. Oh, and my cover fade cardi is in my new project bag, which I am so, so enjoying. And this was that project bag by, let me see here, may contain egg farm. I don't think they're online, um, but I know she, I just bought it at her little shop. And it's the cutest thing. It was, she was at the F Michigan Fiber Arts Festival. Michigan Fiber Festival, Michigan Fiber Festival big deal in Allegan, Michigan. Apparently it's annual, so next year I want to go back again. I bought a bunch of fiber and now that I've been spinning, I definitely, um, yeah, we'll be going back to get more fiber for next year. <laughs> I'm addicted, you guys, to everything fiber art. I haven't taken on using a loom yet, so even though I know my mom would just love that because she likes working with a loom. Anyway, so let's see what else I have to cover here before we get into just fun chat chat. Oh yes, so speaking of hand spun, I finally 
finished my very, 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 very first hand spun. Are you ready for this? It's very much like our yarn, you guys, and I'm very proud of it. And I have no idea what I'm gonna make out of it. <laughs> Maybe a hat? I have no idea. But I'm proud of it nonetheless. So here it is, the ball. This is a, uh, let's see. How do I want to describe this? It is a viscous, viscose. I used my uh, ladybug, my shot ladybug um, spinning wheel. Super adorable spinning wheel. Love it. And this is my very first spin, you guys. Be kind. <laughs> it's my very first spin. So definitely thick and thin. My consistency is terrible. <laughs> So I've got like thick spots, thin spots. I definitely over twisted in many spots. I've got, I mean, like when I say thin spots, like I have fingering weight and then I have some spots that are probably like super bulky weight. <laughs> so like I said, I'm not sure, maybe a hat. I don't know what else I could really make with it. Maybe a cowl, I guess, I, I don't know. Um, I haven't weighed it yet, I probably should do that. I'd say this is about two ounces of wool, of uh, viscose, it's not wool, so it's plant-based fiber. We all know how I feel about plant-based fiber. Hello cotton, anyway. <laughs> but yes, this is my very first one and it was, you know, a deal and a half. I got this fiber with my wheel so that I could play with it and that was super kind of um, Deb, who owns Baker Fiber Studio. If you're ever in Allegan, please check it out. She's amazing and she has excellent products. So this was from there, as well as my shop spinning wheel, my ladybug. So I spun the singles on there. I did two ply, plying, and I took my two singles and plied them. I don't have a jumbo flyer for my spinning wheel yet because they're really expensive. And since I just bought a spinning wheel, I decided I'm going to buy something that's reasonable for plying. And when I was at Fiber Festival, I picked up a Turkish spinning wheel, or a spinning wheel, Turkish drop spindle, oh my word. <laughs> uh, yeah. Turkish drop spindle, this is a competing company for my spinning wheel, which is a shock. This is a uh, Ashton or Ashford, Ashford, Ashford Turkish spindle. As you can see, these come apart and you create the turtle, which is what that uh, shape is here. And this is a really bad example of what a turtle looks like, but basically it's wrapping so you can pull from the center and the bottom if you so choose. But anyway, that's what it looks like plied up. And yeah, that worked really well. That worked really well for plying. And uh, it will do for the, for the meantime. I'd really like to try to get better at my gauge. I would really like to try to spin singles that are closer to lace weight. I don't think I'm gonna get lace weight. But closer to, because I would really like to, um, when I do, Two ply. I don't know if I'll ever get to three ply. And I guess never say never, but um, I would really like to get to fingering weight with the two ply. So I am getting better, you guys. Oh my gosh. So when I finally got that off the spinning wheel, I now have started spinning my fleece that I purchased. So it's like a, a fleece to finished garment. There's a term for that. <laughs> but um, I that's my goal to take a fleece to a finished item. And I have enough that I think I could knit up a garment with it. It is Cotswold wool and it is a variegated, so there's gray, black, white, and I'm spinning it all together randomly. I'm carding it so it gets blended and then I'm just spinning it from Rolex that I'm making using the cards. So. It's going to be uh, very much a variegated garment as well, but it will be in the same color family kind of throughout. So I think it'll look really cool once I'm finally finished. 
but I have to obviously spin the wool before I can knit it. So I'm getting there. I'm definitely getting there. And I'm going to be so excited to show you if you're interested in that. Uh, I definitely am more of a knitter. And so, I mean, you're going to see a lot of knitting content on this channel, but, um, and wonderful dyed yarn because that's what I do. But anyway, spinning is something I've now branched into. So there will be just a little bit here and there about spinning. And I hope you're excited about that too, just hearing about all these wonderful new options. So just to wrap things up, yeah, it's hot as can be here <laughs> in, the, in Michigan. And I just wanna knit everything. I'm sure everybody does, but I just, I really do. And I wanna dye colors, but I really, really wanna knit so bad. And now I want to spin because I started doing that. So I can't wait to buy more fleeces. Like, I really am enjoying it. And I can't wait to start also spinning all the fun wool that I purchased at the Fiber, Michigan Fiber Festival. That was so much fun. And they're beautiful. And they're going to be different lengths of uh, the fiber staple is different. So that'll be also a learning curve. So viscose is very long. Um, very long. So I guess that's closer to doing silk. I guess it's the closest way, uh, similarity to spinning silk. So I've gotten that under my belt. I have now also been spinning my Coswold, which is I think around five inch staple length. So the staple, staple, if you're not familiar, is the length of your fiber. So like if you were to pull a hair, don't do it, but if you were to pull a hair out, right, that's your staple length. So the staple length is the sheared off uh, wool when it's, held straight. So Coswold, they're five inch ones, the ones I got about four to five inches, which is excellent because it's kind of like a good transition. I went from the viscose, which is like five inches, I think, or so, if not more. And now I am doing Coswold, which is slightly shorter. And then I um, want to venture into Merino. I have Merino comb top and that is want to say usually around four inch staple length ish and so that's a lot of short draw um, which I haven't really done much of even though I feel like I kind of do short draw but when I'm doing the you working with the Coswold I'm doing like a long draw method I am getting much better at my um, actual gauge of my yarn that I'm creating so that's exciting because my when I spin that, when I ply it, I should say, when I ply that spun singles, they're going to look a lot closer to fingering weight. I'm really excited about that. It'll probably be more like DK weight, but I'm, I'm really excited about that. That's huge improvement over my super like bulky sections of this. I did, I so far, I have not created super bulky sections with my Coswold fleece, which is great because I took a lot of time and energy to clean that fleece. And so I'm excited. I'm so excited. Anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week and I will be catching up with you shortly. I might not do a video next weekend. I will be seeing family. It is Labor Day holiday and we will be traveling. So I might not be doing a video next week, but I will definitely be catching up with you guys shortly. And again, I hope you have a great rest of your week. Make sure you're kind to uh, others and and yourself. And um, yeah, I hope you're staying happy, healthy, and I hope you're creating. Have a great rest of your week, guys. Bye.